What are the best writing apps that you can use for your iPad? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. I've spent months testing some of the best writing apps, both free and paid for my iPad. I use them to write blog posts and articles and also to edit the work of other writers. And I'm gonna profile those apps in this video. If you enjoy the content, hit thumbs up and to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before I profile these apps, Here's a tip for you, invest in a good keyboard for your iPad. I've used the Logitech keyboard, which works great with an iPad Pro, and also Apple's proprietary keyboard, which is a little bit more expensive and cost me a little over $200. But it's much more enjoyable and efficient to type with a proper keyboard on your iPad than trying to tap out an article or a blog post using the touchscreen. Now let's go over to the best apps. I love writing with Ulysses on my iPad. I love it because it supports Markdown and also because it's a type of minimalist writing app which eliminates all distractions. And it works great across all Mac and iOS devices. You can use Ulysses to write blog posts, to write articles, and even to manage bigger projects like a book. And I've done all of this inside of Ulysses. And it's something that will stay out of your array no matter the size of the writing project in question. It'll cost you $39.99 per year or $5.99 per month. For that price, you can use Ulysses on your Mac, iPad, and iPhone. So I sometimes write on my Mac and then I'll open up my iPad and finish off the article. This is Ulysses on my iPad. On the far left, I can access my library of documents, anything I've worked on over the past seven days, anything in my iCloud inbox, and anything that I've categorized with tags, files, and folders. Then if I select an article, I can hide the library and I can even hide the uh, left sidebar as well and write in full screen mode. I can also use this option here to enter and exit full screen. So it's a good minimalist writing app. You can also see here that it supports Markdown, which is basically a way of writing or formatting content for the web. And then if I press this button here, I can also get various options to publish and export the article in question to my site or to save it as a PDF, as a Word document and so on. Uh, I can also use Ulysses uh, to write in split screen view, so whereby you can have two articles open side by side. So you could be reviewing your notes and editing at the same time. Obviously for that to work, you'll need a bigger iPad rather than a smaller iPad to get the best value from that particular feature. If you click on this icon here, you can get information about characters, word counts, keywords. You can also access your outline based on the headings that you put into your article. I suppose in summary, I like Ulysses, for writing on an iPad because it's quick and easy to use. It syncs great across all of my devices, it supports Markdown, it has a minimalist writing mode, and I can publish quickly and easily to my site. The only downside, I guess, will be the price at $39.99 per year. You have to renew that each year, and I know that could put off some writers on a budget, but this is the writing app on the iPad that I use the most. IA Writer is another popular minimalist writing app that you can use on your iPad. I've used IA Writer on and off over the past few years. There wasn't many updates made to this app until quite recently. Now you can use IA Writer, much like Ulysses, to manage both small and big writing projects. Whereas before it was more suited for small writing projects. The time of recording this video, it is a little bit more expensive than Ulysses, so it's gonna cost you $49.99 to buy the Mac version, but that's a once off payment and then it's gonna cost you a similar amount to use it on iOS and iPad. But again, that's a once off payment. So I guess if you're gonna use IA Writer for a few years, it could work out cheaper than Ulysses. Now IA Writer works much the same as Ulysses. So basically you can sync to your iCloud account and then all of the articles that you have inside of IA Writer, you will basically format them for the web using Markdown. You can press the play icon here to preview what one of your articles uh, will look like. And then you can press the share icon here to share it as a Word document or text file or some other format to print it or to export it to your website. So you can see all of the various options that you have. Uh, also IA Writer, because it's a minimalist writing app, enables hiding all of these extraneous features. So you can actually go into a uh, full screen mode and you can just focus on writing. And as you can see here, it has quite a pleasing font and uh, quite a pleasing design. So it really will stay out of your way. Part of a recent update, IA Writer enabled interlinking your notes inside of the app for iPad. And you can also do this on the Mac version as well. To show you what this means, you simply just type two square brackets, and then you're gonna put in the title of another note or another document inside of IA Writer. 
So I wrote an article about the Zettelkasten method some time ago. So if I press two square brackets and type in Zettelkasten, now it'll automatically pull in this link from my library of notes. So basically this is a way of organizing your research, for organizing your ideas, and I suppose for managing bigger writing projects. And then if you click on the play icon here, then you can simply navigate to your other note and you can start editing uh, that note as well. So it's a good way of navigating a, a library of dozens or perhaps hundreds of different notes or articles that you have inside of IA Writer. The ability to interlink your notes or your articles inside of IA Writer is a feature that Ulysses lacks at the time of recording this review. Hopefully they'll roll that out at some future point. But until they do, it's fair to say IA Writer probably has a slight edge over Ulysses, particularly for longer form articles. Now, if you're simply writing blog posts or short form articles, you probably won't use that interlinking feature as much, City but I really do think it's quite helpful. Writing app that you can use on your iPad for managing a personal knowledge base of notes, research, and ideas. I use it quite regularly to outline articles and to capture notes and ideas for potential books and so on that I'm gonna write at some future point. Now you can use Obsidian on your Mac and then it'll sync over to your iPad using Obsidian Sync or iCloud Sync. There is a small learning curve to Obsidian, but once you figure it out, it's actually pretty easy to use. Now basically Obsidian sits on top of uh, your library of markdown files or text files that you have on your Mac or in iCloud or that you're syncing with Obsidian Sync. And Obsidian is also free to use unless you're going to use their proprietary sync. So this is a note that I have inside of Obsidian of a list of over 100 books that I want to read at some future point. So I can add to this list quickly and easily on the iPad and it supports Markdown. So I can simply use hashtags to format this list for, for the web. Uh, now what I like particularly about Obsidian is its ability to interlink between notes. So you can see here, I have a section here, also see best creativity books. And if I click on this particular link, it'll take me over to, to the creativity books note inside of Obsidian. I can also click on this icon here and I can toggle uh, a live preview mode or I can toggle an editing mode depending on what I want to do with the note in question. It's also possible to have two different notes open side by side. So I'm using an iPad with an iPad keyboard and if I press command shift N on the keyboard I can open two different notes side by side. So I could have this note here as an article about a book I read and then I could use the left hand side of the screen to refer to my notes from the book uh, in question. Now if I click on the hamburger menu here you can see that I have thousands of notes inside of Obsidian. And I found that Sync is pretty much rock solid once you've set it up. You can also customize the look and feel of Obsidian using custom themes and so on. Now I use this over Apple Notes for a few different reasons. Uh, firstly, I like that it supports Markdown so I can format content for the web. And secondly, because it enables bi-directional linking between notes, which is something that Apple Notes doesn't uh, in the feature or support just yet. Because Obsidian is something that sits on top of your personal library, you're not locked in. So if you need to take your notes to another app, you can do just that. So in fact, I could open any of these notes that I've taken inside of Obsidian with IA Writer or with Ulysses. I don't have to worry because uh, Markdown is su universally supported. I'd be remiss to record a video about the best writing apps for iPad and not mention Apple Notes. So Apple Notes is free and it's something that has rock solid sync across all of your iOS and Mac devices. And of course, there's no learning curve, it's easy to use. And Apple has added lots of great features over the years. Now I do use Apple Notes sometimes to capture quick notes and fleeting notes that I want to refer to and then move into another writing app. So what do I mean by this? Well, for example, this is a checklist of items that I wanted to bring to a triathlon. So I just generated this checklist inside of Apple Notes and then I tick them off one by one. Or if, for example, there's a video that I want to watch or a note or some other piece of information that I want to quickly sync to my Mac or to my iPad from either device, I'll just put it straight into Apple Notes. However, I don't usually write long form articles inside of Apple Notes because um, I prefer using Markdown. Uh, so this is using rich text. And sometimes I find when you're writing in rich text, it can copy across odd formatting quirks if you're publishing the article line or, or writing online, for example, in WordPress. Uh, now that's just reflective of how I like to write, but Apple Notes is fantastic and it's really improved over the years. And to be honest, if you were looking for a free writing app to use in your iPad, uh, you probably can't go wrong with it uh, just because of how ubiquitous it is across all of the Apple devices. Whenever I'm writing a book, I use Scrivener. That's because it excels at managing long form projects. 
Basically, you can turn your book chapters or acts into sections that you can drag around and rearrange. You can also use Scrivener to format your work prior to publishing or self-publishing on a store like Amazon. At the time of recording this video, you can buy the desktop version for your Mac for $49, and then you can go ahead and buy a version for your iPad for another $20. So it's great that there's no monthly renewals or annual renewals, unlike so, some other writing apps for your iPad. So I did use Scrivener to edit sections of my last book, which I wrote in 2020 and 2021. Scrivener is okay to use on an iPad, but it does have some quirks. So the first quirk is that you need to set up sync via Dropbox, so it doesn't work via iCloud. Uh, so that's something that you'll need to do if you want to ensure version control across your project files. Once you open up your Scrivener project file, it looks pretty similar to what you get in the desktop version. So on the left-hand side, this reflects the left-hand side sidebar that you would have in the desktop version of Scrivener. So this is a chapter uh, from my book. Now, if I don't want to see the sidebar, if I find this distracting, I can just simply enter full screen mode and then I can start writing without worrying about any unnecessary distractions. I can use this icon here to change the formatting uh, for my book chapter and subheadings, body text, and so on. Then I can use this icon here to open up other documents inside of my Scrivener project file. So this is documents or files inside of the project rather than different Scrivener projects. And then I can also use this here to uh, search. And then when I'm done, I can just simply click on done. And then you can use the share icon to compile a draft, send a copy, or open in a different uh, writing app. And do remember that you do need to sync your project when you're finished to ensure that your changes are reflected across all of your devices. That's not something you need to do with the other writing apps that I've talked about. That is a quirk uh, of Scrivener. Then I can use this uh, icon here to preview what my draft would look like. And I can also use this icon here to bookmark certain sections as well. So basically, if you've written a book or you want to write a book, and you just want to manage it all with one writing app, Scrivener could be for you. Assuming you're happy with the uh, quirks related to rich text on iPad and also to how it handles sync. Google Docs is a, another good writing app that you can use on your iPad. It's free to use and you know it's gonna sync instantly across to your other devices because it's managed through Google. I've used it on and off to edit articles and I don't use it all the time, but it is helpful for editing rather than writing. So for example, I can see all of my Google Docs files here. And if I open up this article here that I wrote about NFTs some time ago, you can see here that I can preview what the article looks like. And then if I click on the pencil icon, I can go in and start editing it. So this can be a good way of just writing something on the go quickly and easily. Now, the reason why I don't use this all the time is, uh, firstly, I don't like how Google handles uh, formatting. I personally prefer Markdown, but as I've said before, that's related to how I like to write. Um, I also find that sometimes uh, Google will make it a little bit challenging for me to find the document uh, in question. So if, for example, I finished editing this particular article and I press correct, and then I go back, uh, then I need to navigate through all of my files to try and find that again. Now, there are ways that you can star articles or that you can favorite them, um, but compared to some of the other writing apps for bigger writing projects, I find it's just easier to do it in Ulysses or IA Writer. Uh, so if I go back into another article that I wrote inside of Google Docs. You can also see that there are options to share uh, with your editor or to share with another writer, and then you can mark it up for comments and so on. Uh, but it is pretty good if you're looking for a free writing app for your iPad. And of course, you're not confined to using Google Docs. If you have an iPad, you can simply use Pages and write for free using Mac's word processor. Uh, I've also used Pages that has templates and it has documents similar to what you'll find in Microsoft Word, which you can also use on your iPad. So if I were to open up a book, I can click on Contemporary Novel. Pages will take a moment to download the template and then I can go in and I can start uh, editing and writing inside of this particular template. Personally, I would find this overkill. I would like to have just the manuscript completely written, copy edited and line edited before I started using a template like this. Now, of course, you can do that as well. You can just simply open up a blank document uh, inside of Pages. So simply click on the plus and then click on blank. And then you can start writing uh, as normal um, inside of your or inside of pages on your iPad. And then it has similar features to what I saw on Google Docs. So you can share with other people. Um, you can also uh, share it, export it, print it uh, and so on. And then you can use this option here to create a table of contents that you can navigate and you can hide or view the sidebar if you want a type of minimalist experience. Now it is a rich text editor, much like Google Docs, rather than one that supports Markdown. 
But again, because it comes with the iPad, it could be a good choice for you if you just want something to start writing quickly and easily. Byword is another minimalist writing app that supports Markdown. It costs just $6.99, so it's cheaper than Ulysses and IA Writer, but it doesn't have all of the extra features, for example, bidirectional links, and also uh, an ability to manage bigger writing projects. So if you're simply writing blog posts for the web, or if you're simply writing short articles, then Byword could be for you, because it only costs a little under $7. Now it syncs uh, with your iCloud library of notes. So you could potentially write articles in IA Writer and Ulysses, and then edit them in Byword, or find a particular workflow that works for you. Uh, it also syncs with Dropbox, and you can also add other sources. Um, so for example, files that you might have on your iPad as well. Now I have used Byword on and off, but personally I think Ulysses looks a little bit better and so does IA Writer, and I prefer the additional features that those writing tools have. But that said, it's cheap and cheerful. If you're looking for an alternative to Scrivener that you can use on your iPad, you could consider Living Writer. It's basically a writing app that's purposely built for authors and novelists. So it has lots of different story templates that you can use. Now, Living Writer is something that involves paying a monthly subscription. It will cost you $8 uh, per month. I do have a review of Living Writer on the Become a Writer Today channel, uh, which you can check out. Now, the app that Living Writer offer for iOS is a little bit more bare bones. So basically, you're just going to go into your Living Writer project and you're just going to go in and write uh, individual chapters or sections. And I did notice that sometimes it can take a little bit of time to load or time to sync. And it doesn't have all of the features that Scrivener will have uh, inside of its writing app. But that said, the templates that you get inside of Living Writer, particularly on the web version, are quite good and quite time saving. For example, here is a template here uh, about the hero's journey. So test hero's journey. And I can give it a description and an author, which is optional. And then I can click create. And then Living Writer will just take a second to populate the template uh, for me. And basically this will enable me to write a story based on the popular hero's journey uh, framework. So I'm, I'm actually gonna skip this, but there is tool tips that explain how it works. So you can see here that these are all of the sections that I should include if I was going to write a story uh, based on the hero's journey. And that's an overview of the best writing apps for iPad. Personally, I use Ulysses the most because it supports Markdown and has fantastic document management features and I can write and publish to the web inside of this app. I also really like IA Writer. In the past, I've used Scrivener to edit book chapters and sometimes I'll try a free writing app like Google Docs if I need to do something quickly and easily and I'm in a rush. That said, find one writing app that suits your workflow and which suits your budget and stick with it. Don't let looking for a perfect writing app turn into a form of procrastination. I hope you enjoyed this roundup. If you did, hit thumbs up and to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.